Number two says, a 2.8 kilogram rectangular air mattress is two meters long, a half a meter wide, and a tenth of a meter thick. So we've got this rectangular air mattress. So we want to draw a rectangular prism to start. Okay, it says that it's two meters long. It says that it's a half a meter wide. And it says that it's a tenth of a meter thick. Not drawn to scale, obviously. Now, it says that the mass of this is 2.8 kilograms. Tenth of a meter thick. Point one. Point one. A tenth of a meter thick. Now, the question says the following. What mass can it support in water before sinking? In water. What mass can it support? So we have to think from the other day, our ultimate conclusion was this. If the density of the object is greater than water, it will sink. Again, the statement is the following. If the density of the object is greater than the fluid it's in, it will sink. Now, we happen to know the density of water is in a table. And I'll tell you what it is. The density of water, or the fluid that this is, is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay? So the density of the fluid is water. It's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, we want to know what additional mass can this mattress hold and still float? What's its limit? So right now, let's first see if this mattress alone is going to float. How do we know? How can we find the density of the mattress? What can we do? So what is the volume? Okay, the volume's... No. 2 times 0.5 times 0.1. Is 0.1, not 1. Oh, yeah, so sorry. Okay, that's all right. So, so start, say it again. So you're starting by finding the volume. Which is 0.1. Volume for any rectangular solid. We have to have this memorized. This formula has got to be an automatic by now. You've seen in geometry, you've seen it. Length times width times height. So we've got 2 times a half times a tenth. A half of 2 is 1 times a tenth is a tenth still. So the volume is 0.1 cubic meters. And then you divide 2.8 two by that. Good. Remember, density is always mass over volume. Here's the mass up here of the actual mattress. Here's the volume of the mattress. What's 2.8 divided by 0.1? Um, it's 2.28. Other the way around. 28. 28. So the density of the mattress is 28. What's the density of the water again? 1,000. 1,000. So the density of the mattress is 28. It's less than the density of water. Therefore, it will float. So we've shown already that it is floating currently. The question becomes now, how much additional mass can it take on? So how would you write that? How would you... Show a hand, please. How would you write that in a formula to solve for the additional mass and still have a value less than 1,000? What equation can I write, Stash? It would be 1,000 equals x. Um, Hold on. Let's use an inequality. That would be less than Thank you. Good. But it would be Good. And what's the, what's the quantity? It would be um, the mass. Which is? Um, 2.8. Sorry. 2.8. Is that Kilograms, yeah. 2.8 kilograms. Plus. Good. Over. Good. Let's take a look at this. Remember, we want the density of the object to be less than the density of the fluid. So we say this over here, what well, we've written this statement on the left, and I'm going to move everything up for a sec, hang on. This statement is the density of the object, and we want that to be less than 1,000. That's our statement. That's our limitation. The density of the fluid is 1,000. It's water. We need the density of the object to be less than that, so it'll float. What is that, P of? Okay, the density of the object. So the density, though, remember, is mass over volume. Stop talking, guys. The mass of the object initially is 2.8 kilograms, 
But we're going to be adding some additional mass to it. So like a person laying on top of the mattress or a brick that it's carrying. Make believe, think about this, can be modeled like if you're stuck on an island somewhere, you have to make a raft out of wood. This is a similar idea, right? The raft can be modeled as like a mattress or a flotation device and how much mass can it hold before it'll sink. So these are actually facts that are somewhat useful. I don't think you'd ever get stranded on an island, oh, you be, like, but you never know. Yeah. You never yeah. know. You would not be able I would be able to figure mass. it out for sure. You would not be able to know the mass. I mean, if you have a weight, you can scale, estimate. Sure. You can estimate. Really? But yeah. of course you could, guys. You can estimate I mean, you easily. Just if you just know, all you need to mass. all you need to know is the volume of it and the density of that yeah, type of wood. If you happen to know wood and its density, that's, that's so, you're, so you have to measure the width, the length. The height. No, it, first of all, if it were logs, it would be circular. So it would be uh, it would be cylinders. You just do pi r squared h. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm being honest. Anyway. So, so here's what happens. Relax, guys. The initial mass of the actual of the actual mattress is right here. Plus, plus some additional mass x all over the volume. Now, here's the thing. In reality. The additional mass that you add also adds volume, doesn't it? Yes. Think about that for a second. The additional mass that you're adding, it says how much more mass can it hold? Doesn't that really also add volume? Well, it's an undefined volume. It's like if you like... It is undefined as of right now, but it is not infinitesimally small. We don't know that it's like these little rods that are extremely, extremely small and very dense. It could be like, it could be like a person that's on top of it. Suddenly, there's a lot more volume. So that's the reason I wanted to look at this problem. Just to think about this. Well, that's the issue right now, Fernando. The book doesn't provide enough information in the problem to talk about additional volume. So for this problem, we cannot do anything. But in reality, there really is some plus V quantity down here, meaning plus the volume of the mass that you're also adding. In reality. But the problem has simplified it and modeled it as only adding additional mass. As if... You were taking the mass and putting it inside of the mattress. Think about that. But then the volume is not changing. That's, that's what they're assuming in this problem. That's what I'm trying to get at. This problem's assumption is that somehow you're lumping the mass inside of the original mattress. So you're cutting out a hole and putting these metal rods in the mattress to line it to make it heavier to see how much it can hold. That would be the way I'm thinking about this problem here. Garrett. So what's thinking that we were talking about putting like a person on the mattress? Yes, but because they're not giving us some additional volume for that mess, we're assuming, that it's, we're assuming it's something that's inside of it, maybe soaking up water. Exactly. I was going to say, exactly. Exactly. Once it accumulates in a certain amount of what's water, that? It Isn't that what we're trying to find? Like, we're trying to find the amount of mass that would make it sink. So if we could set it less than this. The amount of water that it The amount of water that it Sure, so you could think of it as water absorbing. Yeah, absolutely. volume, though. If it's water, absolutely, exactly. That's what actually will happen. Sure. I don't think it says that though. It just says what mass can it support. So it's talking about a mass that it's supporting me as a mass on top. Like a towel. If you throw a towel, it floats a little bit, but then once it's absorbed by the water, then it's actually absolutely. That's exactly what it can be like. Yep, guys, that's a good analogy Jeff gave. Like a towel. Throw a towel in a pool. It's gonna float for a little, right on top. And as soon as it absorbs more and more water, what happens? It sinks. So this could be analogous to that. Okay? Or a cookie in milk. You drop an Oreo in milk in the beginning, it floats. But what happens eventually? We had a while, that Oreo's down. Okay? Hey, let's solve this so we can get an expression, please. Folks, let's solve this. If I multiply both sides by 0.1... I get 2.8 plus x less than 100, subtract the 2.8. So when the additional mass is less than 97.2 kilograms, this mattress will continue to float. But anything beyond that, that's our, that's our limit, or that's our boundary in a sense. Anything beyond 97.2 additional mass will cause this object to sink. Okay, will cause this object to sink. Okay, your book rounds to 97. You're going to see that a lot. 97.2. What are the units again for mass? Kilograms. Kilograms. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at another one now. 
On the top of the page, did I have you do two, three, and four? No, two and three. Two and three? What happened to 28? I thought it was 28. I was that the density? The mass was 2.8. The density became 28 when we checked in the beginning. Yes. Because we were just checking to make sure the initial mass was floating, to see that it was lower than 1,000. Okay. Okay, here's a good one. Ready? Number three on the same page on the top. So same page, number three on the top. It says the following. Please write down things that make sense, things that are usable, or things that are like givens. Okay, maybe draw a diagram. A ferry boat is four meters wide and six meters long. Guys, I didn't say to talk, I said to write. It's six meters long and four meters wide. That's all that's given so far. It's, we're told that the ferry boat has a truck that pulls onto it. And when the truck pulls onto it, the boat sinks four centimeters into the water. That's what we're going to exactly say, yeah? So here's the water level. That's what I didn't get. I would say height for some reason. Okay, there's the water level around the boat. It sunk four centimeters. What is that in meters? Point oh four. Yeah, I heard Joey say it right. Good, Joey. Thank you. Point oh four. Now, here's what this means, and this is the interesting part. The volume of the object may be some quantity, but right now, what we know is that the amount of water that has been displaced is really just this bottom portion that's underwater. Remember, the goal for some of our problems is to find the buoyant force. The buoyant force equals density times volume displaced of water times g. The volume that's displaced is the same amount of the boat that's currently underwater. Remember that. Whatever amount of the object is submerged is equal and opposite, or equal to, not opposite, is equal to the amount of water displaced. That was whose principle? Who's it? Archimedes, okay? Archimedes' principle. Now, the question says the following. What is the combined weight of the truck and the raft? So here's the truck on top of here. Okay? It's not really a good truck. I know. Relax. So there's a truck on top of there. And the question becomes, what is the combined mass of the, of the truck and the raft? It does look like a stove. It's true. No, no, no. One thing at a time. Draw a door here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Oh, I see. Alright. It does look like an oven though. Alright. Now let's take a look and think about this. We've got we've got an object floating on water. So right away let's start writing our givens down, people. Let's start writing our givens. First given, the density of the fluid, which is water, is a thousand. The, if the object is floating, what do we know about the buoyant force and the weight? They're what, Jeff? Equal. Equal. They're balanced. Okay. Remember, the free body diagram has weight acting down, buoyant force acting up. If it's floating, it's not moving, thus F net equals zero. Remember, the equation is really this. Okay, that's the equation really. And it started from F net equals FB minus FG. But when it's floating, F net is zero, which gives us this third equation. Now, from that statement at the bottom, FG, FG is just MG, right? The mass of the object times little g. <coughs> Let's write that. In this problem, I'm not going to replace mass with rho V. Remember how I've been replacing mass with rho V? The reason I'm not is because that's what the problem is asking for. It says, what is the combined mass of the truck and the ferry? That's M-O. 
mass of the giant object up here. That's what MO is. So we're not going to replace it. But remember the force of buoyancy. Shh, listen. Remember the force of buoyancy is rho F, V, F, G. The density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that has been displaced or pushed aside times the gravitational constant. What can I do with the G on both sides? Yeah, yeah those are off, right? Right away. What's that little O that's an R? Or rho? The mass of the object oh, 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 equals... Rho is the density. Mass of the object now, we're saying. Because we have a fluid and an object now. Now, here's the thing, people. This is actually a very simple problem. This is our answer. Just plug in. The density of water is known. The volume of the fluid that's been displaced, remember what we said in the beginning. It's the amount of the ferry that's under the water. So if I shaded this in, take a look. Here's the amount of the water that's been displaced. So Whatever this solid is right here. Length times width times height. Yeah, it's a rectangular solid that's been sliced. Take a deck of cards. Take a deck of cards and remove two-thirds of the cards. Don't you still have a small deck of cards? That's like this right here. This is a deck of cards. Remove off these top layer. You still have some volume left. Length times width times a height of 0.04. So this becomes the mass of the object equals the density, which is 1,000, times LWH. L is 6. W is 4. H is 0.04. Okay, again, this quantity, I'm going to put a blue box around it, is the volume of the water that has been displaced or pushed aside. It's the amount of water that the ferry has sunk into, or sucked into, or submerged. That's the green highlighting up here. Okay, and the thousand is the density of the fluid. So velocity, oh, volume, 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 okay. is LWH for it's a rectangular like solid. Displacement, though, okay. Yes, okay. it's the amount of it that has been displaced. Again, this is LWH. That's what volume is. So when you say displaced, that means what's underwater? Yes, again, remember, the amount of water displaced is the amount of the volume that is underwater from the object. It's the submerged quantity. That's Archimedes' principle, okay, part of it. Think about it always. We talked about the example. You take anything like that egg we put in the that glass the other day, it raises the water level because you're putting something else inside of it. It takes the place of it. That's the word displace. What do you get when you multiply these? Yeah, 24,000 times 4, right? Yeah. And then you're going to divide that by 100. It's probably 96 something. I'm thinking 960 or 996. What do we got? Wait, what was It's 0.96 times 1,000. Okay. 96,000. Okay. 96,000. All right, let's take a look at the next one now. We're going to look at number hmm. By the way, that was that 960 we got was the mass, right? Just so you know, listen folks, the 960 we got was the mass. The book asked for the weight, so they multiply that by 9.81 to get the weight. So the answer in the book is different. It's a factor multiplied by 9.81. Just so you know, it's the, it's the right answer we got. But that was the math so we solved for. So they kept no, no, the book said find the weight. The, guys, the question said find the weight. We just found the math and I stopped. But it said find the weight, so we should have multiplied by 9.8. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the page. How much time we have right now? Ten minutes? It's an A-day. All right, so we got a lot of time. So let's look at number three at the bottom. Okay, number three at the bottom of the page. So number three. A 650 kilogram. Guys, stop talking. A 650 kilogram weather balloon is designed to lift a package that's 4,600 kilograms. So we've got a weather balloon that looks... Okay, a weather balloon with a mass of 
650 kilograms. It's about to take a cargo package of some sort. And the cargo package is measurement of 4,600 kilograms. <coughs> It says, what volume should the balloon have after being inflated with helium at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere to lift the total load? And it says, use the density in table 9-1. So, let's take a look. We want to know what the volume, what the volume should be of the actual um, hot air balloon so that it will overcome the, well that, so that air will be enough to push it up. How does a hot air balloon work before I get into this? We talked about it in class, but who wants to, who wants to reiterate how it works? Max. I believe it's like, so there's the, the torch tube. Okay. It blows the hot air up. Mm -hmm. and, and the, the balloon provides, uh, so like, it holds the air, okay. hot air. And, uh, and the cold air isn't able to get inside the balloon. Okay. So it's pushed up because the density inside the hot air, or inside the balloon because of the hot air is greater than the density of the air outside. Well, sorry, the, the density of the air outside the balloon is greater than the density of the air inside the balloon. Exactly. That's, why it That's exactly right. So it causes the overall density of the hot air balloon, the entire thing really, including all the volume, right, and all the mass, to become less than that of air. That's the goal. So for a hot air balloon to float, it needs to have an overall density that is less than air. And that's logical, because air is a fluid. You're currently in a fluid right now. You're at the bottom of the ocean in this fluid of air. But it really is true. Okay? Now, if you could somehow get your body to be less dense than air, you would float. You actually would float, and that's how a hot air balloon works. Jack. Does that say 4,600? 4,600, yeah. So, the density of air, write this down, please. The density of air is, well, this is the air around us. This is the air around us, so the density of the fluid, yes. The density of air or the fluid is 1.29. It's in a table, so I'll give you the table if you need it, yeah. It is a constant. So the density of the air around us is a value of 1.29. And it definitely differs different places in the world, obviously. But this is an average. Now, we want, we want to fill this up with helium, right? We want to fill it up with helium. Helium's density is 0.179. And I'm just going to put helium. I'm not going to put object yet. So we have to lower... Helium is 0.179. So helium definitely floats. That's why, like, you know when you go to, like, a birthday party when you were a kid, they had a lot of balloons, and those balloons, they were held up. They were usually filled with helium. Look at the density of helium versus air. Helium is far less than air. Air is 1.29. Helium is 0.179. That's why helium balloons always float until enough helium leaks out and enough air leaks in, which causes it to... Fall back down. Fernando. When you fill up with regular air, it's like you blow into it, mm -hmm. it still kind of like floats. Because carbon dioxide is a little bit less dense than air. Wow. <coughs> and you're blowing carbon dioxide into yeah. it. <coughs> uh, I can tell you what that one is. I thought carbon dioxide is more than air because it has more particles. Mr. Howell, when you're stupid, I don't know. Actually, you're right. It says more than air in here. That doesn't it make sense though. Why would it float? Because it's more than something in it, you know? Let me think for a second. No, no, no. Why would a balloon float then if you blow air into well, it? Is it hot or it hovers? Yeah, it kind of hovers, I guess. So you're, you're, you're bringing the density close to the density of air, I guess. But it is, yeah, it is more. It's 1.98. That's what carbon dioxide is. Because like, if it wasn't the same as air, it would be like the middle, right? If it was the same, No, if it's in the middle, then it's... If it was the same, it would be just hovering, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it would kind of just be like in the middle of the air. If it was less, it would be floating. If it was more, it would be sinking. So it is sinking overall, but it's sinking much slower because of its its balance of the buoyant force and the gravitational force. Why do like carriers, like aircraft carriers, they weigh so much? How do they float? Because they have so much volume. They've got a lot of volume, a lot of empty space inside of them. The shape of a boat displaces a lot of water. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a, like a, a competition lab in here later in the week, and you guys are gonna have to make your own boats. 
the shape helps a lot because there's a lot of volume of water displaced because of that shape. Oh, okay. So we're going to do something this week at the end, okay, okay? on our double. Jeff. Wait, when you're screw diving, you have to do this exact thing. You have to create buoyancy. And it's creating enough, like, air. And yep. Uh, we were talking about this in class today when you weren't here about, Jeff, if you're at the bottom of a pool and you want to stay at the bottom of the pool to, like, explore something, you blow all the air out of your bubbles so it lowers your mass, thus increasing your density. Blow all the air out of your lungs in the form of bubbles. Yes. So you got what I'm saying. It lowers your density. Or it, re- it lowers your mass, increasing your density. Mm-hmm. So Lower your volume, increase your density. Wow. Mm-hmm. Tom. Is that a lot of fun? It's like the end thing. If you really put the egg in the density, like a really salty one, would it float? Yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. Bodies float in the Dead Sea. That's why that's part of the thing of the Dead Sea, because everything floats there. I don't know what the content is, the density of it. I'm not sure. But there's enough salt in there to make things like bodies float, so it's got to be very high. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's continue this problem, folks. So, we've got the overall mass of the object. Let's just add these two numbers together and write it down. All right, what's the mass of the object if we add them together? People, come on. There you go. Thank you, Tyson. One person's listening. The mass of the object is 5250. That was not a tricky question at all. You're adding two numbers together. So we've got the mass of the object. We want the overall density of this object to be less than the density of the air around it. Less than the density of the air around it. Okay? Now, what do we want for this problem or for the sake of this being here? What do we want to think about next? How do we find out the density of the overall object? How can we compare them? Yeah, we do. Well, you first find the uh, density of um, the both combined uh, air, balloon, and object, which you can do mass. I mean, density equals volume over mass over volume. Okay, good. So density is mass over volume. So the density of the object is the mass of the object over the volume of the object. The problem is this right now. Here's the problem. Listen carefully. When you add helium to this balloon to get it to flow, you're adding mass to it. So MO is not the only mass in this problem. We also have to account for the helium that's going into the balloon. We need that. Okay. Well, what about the mass too? The helium that's going into the balloon. Let me show you how we can figure that out. And this is going to be tough, but you need to bear with me. This is a tough problem. Watch. <laughs> Density of helium equals mass of helium over volume of helium. Now... This is where it's going to get kind of crazy. The volume of the helium in the hot air balloon, the volume of the helium could be considered to be the same as the volume of the object. Okay? There's, there's pretty much no volume in the actual basket here. All the volume is up in the air balloon. So you could say that the amount of helium that you add in volume is the same as V0. So VH and V0 are approximately the same. This is where modeling comes into play. Okay? Again, most of the volume of a hot air balloon is taken up in the balloon, not in the basket. So we're saying that the basket has negligible volume and that the only volume involved here is the volume of the balloon. So VH and VO are the same thing, really. So what I'm going to do, hold on one sec, Max. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just call this VO instead of VH because the volume of the object is the same amount of helium we're adding. Now, to do this problem down here at the bottom... This P naught, the, ob- uh, the density of the object down here, we have to remember. We have to remember that the mass of the helium has to also be included here. We haven't found the volume yet, though. No, we have not. Okay. Well, that's what we have to figure out. We don't know the mass of the helium. Solve for mH over here. On the right side, solve for mH. What do you get when you solve for mH? Move the V zero over. Yeah, uh, P-O-V-O over minus M-O. Well, hold off here for a second. Again, we're solving one step at a time. Solving for M-H on the right side, we multiply both sides by V-O. Okay. Now, you guys need to raise your hands. Raise your hands, raise your hands. Everybody, everybody. On the right side over here, we've got The density of helium equals the mass of helium over the volume of the helium, which is the volume of the object. To find the mass of the helium, which we're going to have to put over here in a minute, 
We multiply by VO by bringing it up. We've got density of helium times VO is what the mass of the helium is. But we know the density of helium. We know that value was given. Scroll back up. Density of helium is 0.179. So that's what the mass of the helium is. It's 0.179 times whatever the volume becomes. So we can plug this expression in over here on the left-hand side. For MH? Okay. Well, no, watch. This is what we can do. Yeah, for MH. Sorry, Jeff. Yes. I think you were saying for the whole top. Here's the mass of the object. Here's the mass of the helium. All over VO. This is a little bit tricky, but take a look at the final equation you get. If you take, I'm going to use blue, if you take this expression for the mass of helium, plug it in there, you take the mass of the object, plug it in right there, you get this expression at the bottom here, which only, as you can see, has the variable VO in it. We know PO. PO has got to be some number less than the density of air, so this will float. Remember, PO is the density of the object. For a hot air balloon to actually float, its density has to be less than air. So go ahead and say this. The density of the object has to be less than the density of air. So set it less than or equal to or less than the density of air, which, what did I say that was? When a problem asks one point two nine density of air. What is it? Density of air is Come on, man. It's rude. Sorry, density go ahead. Density of air is 1.29. 1.29. Thank you, Jeff. So the density of the air, I'll take your question, just please wait. The density of air is 1.29. So when we plug this in, what we can see is that we end up with simply one variable. It's in two spots, but we only have one variable to solve for, and that's the V0, or the volume of the object. So we can simplify Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. Olivier. The kg was the units of mass. If you want to drop them for now, that's fine. That's all that was. No, I'm just talking. You sure? Jeff. So we can uh, simplify the VO. Yeah, so let's move the VO up by multiplying. So the left side has 1.29 VO now. Right? Move the VO up here. Combine like terms by subtracting 0.179 VO. And then divide by the result. Solve it like a normal equation. Ignore the inequality. Make believe it's an equality. Paul. 1.29 VO is greater, no, equal, equal, equal. Well, put greater than, but solve it the same way still. Uh, 1.29 VO is greater than uh, 5,250 kilograms plus, plus 0.179. VO, right? Yes. Now combine like terms, Paul? Subtract that one. Subtract, uh, yes. Good, subtract the 0.179 VO. Look at this, take a look. VO, it only changes if you divide by a negative, be careful. VO is like X. VO is like our unknown variable X, so subtracting 0.179 from both sides. What do you get when you subtract 1.29? 1.111. VO, greater than 5250, divide by 1.111 into 5250. It's going to be some number less than 5250. That is 4725. What is it? 4725.4. That's fine, that works. And this is going to be in cubic meters. So, in order, this whole problem, the goal is to find how much helium do we have to actually add to this balloon. In order for this balloon to flow, just to reiterate, the density of the balloon needs to be less than the density of air. So we have the expression for the density of the balloon right here. Take a look. This is the density of the balloon after solving. We set the density of the balloon less than, I'm reading it from right to left, the density of the balloon is less than 1.29, which is the density of air, we solve for V0 doing this, which tells us that in this problem, our volume has to be greater than 4725 cubic meters. Okay, 47.
The book gives 4,700 because they round using significant figures. Okay. The volume of the helium added to the balloon has to be greater than 4725. Okay. Maybe in this problem you give us like not helium but something else. Okay. That's a great question, Jeff. The same exact problem, but instead of helium nitrogen, the only thing that would change is this. Take a look. I'm going to point to it. Right there. This was the density of helium that we used earlier. That was the only fact about helium in the whole problem. <laughs> so this would change to whatever the density of nitrogen is. Still really good question. Still nothing would change. Equation, it would still be added in. Nothing else would change in the entire problem except 0.179 here, which is here, which is here, which is here, would all change values to whatever the density is. That's why this is a powerful way to solve a problem, you can alter it very small or in very one small manner and change the problem up just by changing one number throughout the whole problem. Okay? That's why a lot of times you talk about a powerful solution. That's what this would be considered because you can change it very easily. Okay? We're finding the cutoff. Powerful that's solution. Why they say, that. say again? We're, we're finding the cutoff. The cutoff. So if the volume of helium added is not greater than this number, it won't float. But once the volume added is greater than this, it will float. If it goes higher up, it will still float. It will float and it will rise even faster. Because the buoyant force will get even larger. And then you'll have an overall net force that's imbalanced. When there's an imbalanced net force, you have MA. Mass times acceleration. Remember, F net equals MA. So when the buoyant force overcomes the force of gravity, you have an overall F net of some positive value equaling MA, which can give you the acceleration of the balloon. We can actually find the acceleration of the balloon if we knew how much buoyant force there was by using the actual volume given. Really intriguing. You can figure out exactly how fast it's going to accelerate just by the volume. A powerful force that we like a powerful solution to that. Have we done any other like Yeah, we've done stuff where we solve for like remember the range of a projectile in all variables. So, oh, really? That's a powerful so, solution uh, because yeah. you can simply change a variable when you answer. So instead of theta being 30 degrees, now it's 45 degrees. How does that alter in the range? You know? That's the same idea. Hey, one analogy to this is something we talked about in class the other day. I was talking about examples of things. There's none in there. Right over there. Right over there. I was talking about examples the other day of things that have variable densities. And I talked about a fish. And certain fish will not absorb, I want to say, will take in carbon dioxide through their gills and fill up like lungs fill up in a human body. And if they fill up enough, it causes their density to be less than water, which will help them flow to the top or the surface. This is exactly the same thing. This is a model of fish taking in some gas in the form of carbon dioxide and floating up toward the surface at some accelerated rate. Stash. Um, why did that fish float the surface? There's, I think, a reaction inside their body which causes carbon dioxide to be produced or some gas to be produced in the body which causes it to float. I think that's my guess. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. That would be an educated guess.